Welcome to 2012. America's Evil Genius back with you and uh, ready to go and raring to go for what should be uh, the most enthralling, the most uh, contentious, the most divisive, the most angry, the most vitriolic, the most interesting, and maybe the most important election year of our time. You know, I, I've gotten the impression through 2011 that almost that, that most people were just kind of saving their energy a little bit. Everybody was so up in arms leading up to 2010, not just the conservatives who were fighting for something, but the liberals who were trying to, to keep us from achieving it. Everybody who fought so hard up to those uh, congressional elections of 2010 that I think a lot of people, not the politicians, but people like you and I, and we just cooled our jets a little bit. Maybe you started paying attention to some things other than politics for a year and got things back to normal a little bit in our lives in preparation for 2012 because we all know I think deep down we all understand that this election is going to be the absolute most balls to the wall contentious heated dirty whatever you want to call it that's what 2012 is going to be so I'm ready to go we, we we're all recharged we've all uh, we've all taken that time away through 2011 so now game on and and I'm, I'm here to tell you I'm ready for it uh, you know what they say, anything that's worth fighting is worth fighting dirty for. So that's what this election is going to be. And if, if you're one of those people that doesn't really like the uh, tone of politics that's in America today, well, I hate to tell you, but you're really not going to like 2012. I'm, I'm telling you, it's going to get a lot more vicious before it gets any better. So with that in mind, with that having set the stage, with, with us knowing what we're going to deal with in 2012 from all sides of the aisle, I wanted to talk about a uh, question today that I often get from people, and I hear people talk about kind of in a, in a wistful sense or in a hopeful sense. I want to ask the question today, is America ready for a third political party? Would America benefit from a third political party? Now, where is this coming from? Well, the one thing for all the contentiousness that we all have with each other, for all the divisiveness that's out there, for all of the anger, for all of the disagreement, for all of those things, the one thing that Americans almost across the board seem to have in common is that the vast majority of us, whether we're conservative, liberal, moderate, whatever label you want to give yourself, the vast majority of us are quite dissatisfied with the two-party political system in America as it stands today. You could ask a, an extreme conservative such as myself, and I could give you a laundry list of things that I'm upset about the Republican and Democratic Party in Washington about and all sorts of things they've done wrong and I've done that on this show many times but likewise you could go to an extreme liberal somewhere and they could give you an entirely different list of things and reasons that they are dissatisfied with the Washington establishment the only thing out there that we all seem to be able to agree on is that none of us like Washington none of us like Congress None of us like the status quo as things are done. And you've seen through the last couple of years some examples on both sides of the political aisle of people trying to take action in that regard. People that are dissatisfied with the status quo and want to do something about it. On the right, you've seen the Tea Party emerge. You've seen the Tea Party uh, really come about after the election of Barack Obama. And a lot of people initially thought that it was little more than a knee-jerk reaction to the election of Obama. But as this thing has gone on and the, the conservative uprising that, that's come up around it, far beyond just what the Tea Party is, as that has happened, I think people have finally started to realize that, wait a second, this isn't just dissatisfaction with Barack Obama. This isn't just dissatisfaction with the Democratic Party. There's a lot of dissatisfaction with the Republican Party as well. That this is not just a group of people who's willing to go along with whatever the Republican leadership tells them to do. And I think you're seeing that come about in this primary process now that Mitt Romney's pushed down our throats and no matter what happens we have a hard time getting behind him. He stays there at 25 percent and all these other candidates rise and fall and nobody wants to go with the establishment candidate. You're seeing that on the American right now, that dissatisfaction with the status quo. Likewise, on the left you're seeing a lot of that as well. You've seen a lot of people complain that Barack Obama has not been liberal enough. A thought which scares me to death. But it's true, there are people who think he has not gone far enough in ruining this country. I'm sorry, in, in, in uh, giving the left what they want. In making America the type of country that they want to see. 
In fact, the Occupy Wall Street movement that came about, to the extent that there was anything cohesive about it at all, uh, it seemed to be that that was a component of it. That they too were dissatisfied with the status quo. Now granted, dissatisfied with the status quo for radically different reasons than the Tea Party was, radically different reasons than the conservatives are dissatisfied with the status quo, but they too said that, hey, Washington is not working in the way that I want it to work. They are dissatisfied with the two-party system. We are dissatisfied with the two-party system. Although you couldn't come up with more different reasons for why these two groups are dissatisfied with it. We feel like government's doing way too much. They feel like government's not doing enough. Well, geez, if you wonder why there's so much disagreement in American politics right now, and if you wonder why we can't compromise, and if you wonder why, you know, it's my side against yours, there's the reason. There is no common ground among American citizens, not just among the parties, among America itself. There is no common ground. But it does show you that as different as those situations are, that there is a lot of dissatisfaction to go around. So I think that it's natural that people would ask the question, could a third party emerge that would better satisfy some of these concerns? Well, do we really need a third party? There might be room for one, and I'll tell you about that a little bit later, but in terms of if we actually need one, I don't know that a third party in and of itself is the answer. When I look at the problems of American politics, and I look at the problems of the American in, in general, if I'm honest about it, I don't sit here and think, well, if we had a third party, all the problems would be solved. No, I don't really believe that. When I look at how voices like mine are not represented in government as well as they should be, I don't necessarily think a third party is the reason that they're not represented. The main problem that America has right now, in my estimation, is not a lack of a third party. The main problem that America has right now is that for the better part of 100 years, and you've heard me say things like this on here before, for the better part of the 20th century, America largely abandoned conservative ideals. Now, yes, the Democratic Party was always out on the forefront of that. Yes, they deserved the lion's share of the blame for that. But as we've stated before, the Republican Party through the 20th century, they were no angels either. They were a part of it too. They kind of came along, you know, in, in the back of the bus, if you will, but they bought into the big government hype also. The idea that government was supposed to be a facilitator of all things and a solver of all problems, the acceptance of that idea is what has put America in the pickle that it's in. There's the biggest problem we have to deal with. So in my mind, that's the problem that needs to be solved. Now, if that problem can be solved through the current two-party setup, then fine. That's what we need to do. In that case, a third party won't be necessary. If, however, this problem cannot be solved through the current two-party setup, if they will not allow that to happen, then I suppose, yes, a third party would be necessary. I know that going a third party would be a very difficult task. You have to create infrastructure from the ground up. You've got to get your fundraising in order. You've got to get organized. It would be a monumental task to actually do it. But, at the same time, I'm not willing to, to sit in a political party that no longer services my needs. Now, granted, I'm sure some other people on other sides of the political spectrum would say the same thing. Not that they would come with our third party, we'd go with theirs. But what I'm telling you is there's, there's enough dissatisfaction out there for people to at least entertain the idea. But let me be clear. My goal as an American citizen, as a participant in the political process, my goal is to bring conservatism back to the forefront. Fiscal conservatism, social conservatism, moral conservatism. And whatever has to be done to accomplish that is what I'm in favor of. Meaning that if we can overtake the Republican Party and bring a more conservative approach to the forefront within the Republican Party and within American politics, then that's the best way to do it. That's the shortest distance between two points. That's the straight line. But if that's impossible, then yes, I would be open to a third party. I don't think that there's a magic number of political parties out there that's right for America. I don't know if the best number is two parties, three parties, ten parties, one party. I don't know. Frankly, I don't really care. What I care about is that conservatism, 
fiscal conservatism, social conservatism, moral conservatism. What I care about is a conservatism in those three facets is the dominant political ideology in this nation. And whatever has to be done to make that so is what I'm in favor of. Whatever amount of political parties, whatever number of political parties are required to bring conservatism to the forefront is what I'm in favor of. If it takes a third party, fine. If you can do it through two parties, fine. If you do it through one party, fine. But the end result is that I want the moral and ideological component of conservatism to be the single dominant force in American politics. However, that has to happen. Now, I said earlier that I'd tell you a little bit about how I think a third party could come about. And remember, I'm not saying right here that I want to go third party right now. I'm willing to do well, I'm willing to push conservatism through the Republican Party if that's possible. And frankly, by November of this year, we might know a little bit more about whether the Republican Party will allow that. We'll, we'll know if Mitt Romney's the nominee if we need to start kind of thinking of some other things. But we're not there yet. But I told you earlier that I think a third party of some kind will emerge in our lifetime. It may not be a conservative third party. It could potentially be a party of moderates that are dissatisfied with both the Republican and, and Democratic Party that break off and form something. It could even be a uh, a group of liberals that break off the uh, Democratic Party. Let's say Obama loses the election in 2012. There could be some contentiousness there. There could be people that say, hey, he lost because he didn't do enough liberal things. He didn't go far enough. And then other Democrats would say, no, he, he, didn't, he didn't stay moderate enough. And then you could have that fight. It could happen either way. But the one thing that works in the favor of a third party forming that did not exist 10 or 20 years ago is this. We have multiple cable television news networks that are out there right now. You're familiar with all of them, I'm sure. They all have their different ideological leanings. But the one thing they all have in common is that they've got to get ratings. They've got to fill television time. They've got to come up with something compelling enough that you will stop flipping your remote and watch it. And the dirty little secret is that they have to entertain you in some way. Whether we're talking about Fox News on the right, MSNBC on the left, CNN on the left, although they'll tell you that they're in the center. Whomever they are, they all have to come up with something compelling enough for you to watch, otherwise they go out of business. So I think that we're going to get to a point where this Republican versus Democrat dichotomy that the cable TV news networks have, uh, have lived off of for their existence is going to wear a little bit thin. People are going to get a little bit sick of hearing about it. And to that end, the cable networks are going to need a third entity to come in and spice things up a little bit in terms of telling their story. In terms of giving something compelling to them that they can talk about for 24 hours a day. And I think when the Tea Party came about, I, I think that some of, the, uh, some of the cable news networks really wanted it to become a third party for that reason. Now granted, they were never going to say it. And certainly Fox was going to was always going to, you know, to take their side on things, and MSNBC was always going to tell you how bad they were, but in any case, all of them were going to talk about it. None of them were going to ignore the Tea Party, because they knew if they mentioned the Tea Party, whether yay or nay, they were going to get ratings. So they know that they need this added element in there to spice this Republican versus Democrat dichotomy up, to make it a little bit more interesting. So for that reason, I think that if some kind of third party comes about, as much as the cable networks might dismiss them and, and, and talk badly about them, whoever they are, they will get television time. They will get exposure. They will get the kind of exposure that they never could have gotten 10 or 20 years ago. So they'll be able to make a go of it. Now, how successful a third party would end up being, well, that depends on a lot of other factors. But whoever they are, they will at least get enough television exposure to be out in front of the American audience. Who will the third party be? Ah, it could be anyone. When will it come about? I don't know. I don't think it will come about before this election. I know there will be third party candidates that will probably run, but as far as a viable third party, I don't see that happening in this election cycle. But make no mistake, just because I think a third party will exist, it doesn't mean that I think that is the answer to America's problems. The answer to America's problems is conservatism, period. And the Republicans have the first shot at welcoming conservatism into their party, at allowing conservatism to take control of that party and lead it to the promised land. But if they don't, well, we may have to do it 
on our own. In a way, I hope we don't have to get there. But I'm not willing to take it off the table. That's America's Evil Genius for this week. Happy New Year, and we'll see you next week.